Hi, I'm Richard Pidgeley. I'm the lead pastor at Millpool Hill Church in Birmingham. And I want to say thank you so much for choosing to log in today to watch this video message on a special day, Good Friday 2021. I guess if I had a title for this message, it would be simply Look and Live. 2,000 years ago, Jesus, the Son of God who came from heaven into our world on a most amazing rescue mission to save the souls of men, women and children, was talking to a guy called Nicodemus. It was late at night and Jesus is having a chat with Nicodemus. Nicodemus was a religious leader, a guy that I'm sure knew an awful lot about God and the Holy Scriptures that had been given at that time. And yet, this man who knew a lot about God wanted to know God in the very depths of his being. He wanted a deeper relationship with God. And so Nicodemus came under the cover of night to come and to talk with Jesus. And it was during that conversation with Nicodemus that Jesus gave us probably one of the most quoted verses of the Bible. John chapter 3 verse 16. Jesus said, for God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son, that whoever should believe in him might not perish, but have everlasting life. In this key verse of the Bible, Jesus is revealing the loving heart of our Father God. He also revealed that God's heart is not only loving, but it's expressed in giving as well. God, who is the greatest person, so loved. Love is the greatest emotion. In fact, it tells us that, you know, when everything else has passed away, God's love is the thing that is the greatest and remains. The world. What is the world? Well, the world is God's creation. Beautiful, outstanding, stunning in its creative glory. And yet, because of mankind's sin, it is in a fallen state. God so loved the world that he gave us his only son. We celebrate at Christmas the coming of Christ. We give gifts to one another at Christmas. But the greatest gift of all to all of us from heaven is the gift of God's presence. God so loved us, the world, that's every one of us included, that he gave us his only son the greatest gift of all. And why did he give us the gift of himself? Why? Because we are fallen, because we are in danger of perishing. And yet, if we trust in Christ, if we look and if we trust in him, we can live and more than just live, but have everlasting life. So Jesus took Nicodemus into his kind of um, confidence and shared with him um, some amazing truths from heaven. And then Jesus continued in the conversation by taking Nicodemus way back into the annals of history, as it were, way back to the strange incident of the bronze serpent, because that was a picture of what would happen to Christ in order for us to enjoy the eternal life that God offers us all. And so on this Good Friday, let's take a few moments just to consider the bronze serpent incident. We read about this in the Old Testament. Um, some people will be familiar with this passage if they're Bible readers, others maybe not so much. But Nicodemus, being a religious leader, a teacher, a rabbi, a scholar, and would have understood the Hebrew scriptures, he would have known instantly what Jesus was talking about. And I'll read it from Numbers chapter 21, verses 4 to 9. Then 
the people of Israel set out from Mount Hor, taking the road to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. But the people grew impatient with the long journey, and they began to speak against God and Moses. Why have you brought us out of Egypt to die here in the wilderness? They complained. There is nothing to eat here and nothing to drink, and we hate this horrible manner. So the Lord sent poisonous snakes, fiery serpents among the people, and many were bitten and died. Then the people came to Moses and cried out, We have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray that the Lord will take away the snakes. So Moses prayed for the people. Then the Lord told him, Make a replica of a poisonous snake and attach it to a pole. All who are bitten will live if they simply look at it. So Moses made a snake out of bronze and attached it to a pole. Then anyone who was bitten by a snake could look at the bronze snake and be healed. Wow, what a strange incident. The incident of the bronze serpent really was. The people had rebelled against God. In other words, they were moaning and complaining and they thought that they could do things better than God. But living independently from God, thinking we can do without God and without his rules and regulations in our lives, that is the essence of sin. And sin was something that God could not stand. God's judgment and his response to the sin of the people was to send in those fiery serpents into the camp of Israel in the wilderness. The serpent's venom burned and it caused terrible pain, sickness and fatality, death in the desert. People today are also in constant rebellion against God and they want to live independently from God. The spirit and the attitude of this world is we don't want God. We don't care about Jesus or the Bible. We can do things so much better without the Lord in our lives. That is the attitude of people today and it's the same attitude that the people had in the wilderness all those years ago. It is called sin. Sin's venom is just as deadly today as the fiery venom of those serpents of judgment all those years ago in the desert. Sin's venom brings defilement to our hearts. It causes decay in our lives. It causes disease and darkness, a spiritual darkness and blindness that comes upon us. It causes destruction and even death. Sin is a serious problem. And all those things that sound grim and pretty, you know, bad, all those things are the result of the serpent's bite. Sin will always separate us from a holy God. Sin always leads us to a place of emptiness of soul and heart. Sure, we can fill our lives with so many fun things. We can have um, lots of nice things in our homes and we can drive the best cars and have great jobs. But ultimately, when we filled our lives with the stuff of this world, we still feel empty and unsatisfied. And that is the result of sin in our lives. It causes emptiness now and it will cause judgment and spiritual death, including hell, in the future. When the people saw that the fiery venom was killing people, their friends and their family in the wilderness, they began to turn from their sin. They cried out to God for help. They wanted God to save them because they realised at that point only God could help them and save them. And sinful men and women and boys and girls today need to cry out to God in faith. We need to cry out to the Saviour to save our souls. There was no hope for the people 
so it seemed, and then they remembered the Lord. And I want to say there is hope for every one of us today. God heard the pitiful cries of his people in the wilderness and God will hear the cry of anyone who calls out to him even today to be saved. And what a simple instruction. Make a bronze serpent, nail it to a cross and then uh, to a pole and then lift it up. But what a wonderful salvation when that was done. When Moses did what the Lord commanded, when he made that bronze serpent and nailed it to a pole and then lifted it up so everybody in the camp could look at it. Those that had been bitten by the deadly serpents, those whose lives were burning up with sin that was causing death in their bodies, could look to the serpent on the pole. And the moment they looked in faith, they were saved. They were healed. This fiery venom of sin is still defiling and darkening and destroying people's lives today. The last time I looked, and that was this morning, the world seems to be in a desperate situation. Let's face it, this world that has turned its back on God is in a right mess right now. Mankind is looking for all sorts of answers Mankind is looking to everything and anything that might help, that might take away the, the venom of sin in our lives. We need an anti-venom. And so men look to the occult. They look to religions, to do-it-yourself morality and a whole set of good works, hoping that these things will take away the fiery sting uh, of the venom of the, of the serpent. The, the, st the sting of sin in our lives. And all these things that I've just read out, you know, a lot of them have some good points, but it's not enough. It will never be enough to save your soul. None of these things will take away the sting of death. So God stepped in once again and he sent to us his only son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus came on a great rescue mission to save our souls. And Jesus explained this mission to Nicodemus all those years ago on that dark night when they were talking together. Jesus said to Nicodemus, as Moses lifted up the bronze snake on a pole in the wilderness, so I, the son of man, must be lifted up on a pole so that everyone who believes in me will have eternal life. The cross reveals the awful nature of mankind's sin, but it also reveals the depths of God's incredible love for you and for me. The blood of Jesus is the only anti-venom against the sting of sin. Yes, Jesus would be nailed to a cross. He would be lifted up before all the people. And here's the thing, just as the guilty Israelites looked at the serpent and were saved, we also can look at the Son of God and his work on the cross and also be saved. The fiery venom of sin burns in all our veins. Death is inevitable and yet it can be avoidable if we look in faith to Jesus. Look to Jesus. See him as your saviour today. Look to Jesus as he is nailed upon the cross in your place. He took your place so we, the guilty ones, could be set free. See Jesus and see him as the healer of your soul. He is the one that can take away the sting of death. He can take away that fiery venom burning within us that will cause us to be lost for all eternity. Jesus died so that we can be saved. And all we need to do, it's really simple. We need to look to him as our saviour. We need to put our trust in his redeeming work upon the cross. We need to be willing to turn from our sin. And just like those Israelites in the wilderness all those years ago, we need to cry out to God in repentance. And if we do that, in heartfelt repentance and faith, as we look to Jesus, right now we can 
be saved. We can be restored. We can be healed. We can be forgiven. We can start a brand new kind of life, the best life, an abundant life that Jesus promises us all. I'll finish this with this little illustration. The Bible teaches that the sentence of sin or the sentence for our sin is death. That's a spiritual death. That's separation from God. That is an eternity without Jesus in a place called hell. We all need to realise that our sins have put us on death row. Inevitably, sooner or later, we are all going to die. Imagine, though, if somebody stepped in and took your place. Imagine that. If someone literally stepped in and took your punishment. Now, in the United States of America, some convicted criminals are sentenced to death by lethal injection. Imagine the guards coming to your cell at the appointed time. And then with the prison governor watching over you, you're strapped onto a trolley bed in the death chamber. Hey, this is pretty gruesome. A deadly cocktail of toxic chemicals will soon be pumped into your bloodstream. A needle is inserted into your vein and the machine is switched on at the governor's approval at the right time. And then at the point of no return, somebody walks into the room and pulls the needle out of your arm. That person is God. He is the supreme judge who has righteously sentenced you to death. But now he has walked into the death chamber and he's actually stopped your execution. But what about the deadly poison like the venom of the fiery serpents that has already been pumped into your body and is in your bloodstream? What about that? Well, the judge opens the door and a younger man enters the room. He bends down and he begins to suck the poison from the wound in your arm. You say, that's gross. Yes, it is. But it's nothing compared to the crucifixion. Then the judge orders the guards to release you. But as you hug the judge, he orders then the guards to strap down the younger man and to execute him in your place. And when the lethal chemicals have finally done their terrible work and the young man is declared dead, the guards tell you that the young man was actually the judge's own son. And you go to the judge and you say, your honour, why have you done this? And he looks at you with eyes of incredible love and he says, because I love you. You've never experienced sacrificial love like that before. The judge then takes you by the arm and he leads you out of the prison and into glorious freedom. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8, And now there is no condemnation for those of us who belong to Christ Jesus, for the power of the life-giving Spirit has freed you through Christ Jesus from the power of sin that leads to death. Jesus took your place. He took my place upon the cross. He died so that we could be forgiven. Jesus is the righteous judge's only son. He came and he died. He died in my place. He died in your place. This Good Friday, let's reflect on this incredible love of God. And let's realise that just as Moses lifted up that serpent in the wilderness, that bronze serpent on a pole, and said to everybody that was dying, all you have to do to be saved is to look and live. This Good Friday 2021, I want to say to you, all you have to do to be saved, to have a new life, to be forgiven of your sin, to have healing of your soul and heart, to, to start a new life that will bless you now and take you through all eternity and give you uh, 
a, literally a place in heaven forever and ever to, to have all that blessing that God wants to give you. All you have to do is look and live. Look to the Lord Jesus Christ. See what he did for you upon the cross and receive the eternal life that he offers you. Do it today. Don't delay. Put your trust in Christ. Come to him in repentance. Come to him in faith. Give him your old life. Give him all your sins and let him give you forgiveness. Let him give you love and joy and peace. Let him give you a brand new life. Jesus said, I've come that you might have life in all its abundance. This Good Friday, see what Jesus did for you upon the cross. Look and live. I hope that this message has encouraged you. I hope that it's been a blessing to you. But until next time, may God richly bless you.